Hello, everyone. This is Tanji Baxter. I'm thrilled to be here to talk to you a little bit about digital art journaling today. It's something that I absolutely love to do. And so I thought I would just share some of my thought processes on that. And on the screen is kind of the page where we're going today, hopefully. And I just want to share my thought process on how I got there and how I approach a digital art journaling page. So let me tell you a little bit about what art journaling is before we get started. Art journaling is a little bit different than collage or a scrapbook page. So in digital art journaling, what makes it art journaling is that it has some sort of personal meaning or symbolism uh, that is an expression of your thoughts and feelings um, in something in your life right now. Uh, and it can have an image that means something to you. It can have journaling. Uh, and it can also just be about the process of creating is helping you heal in some way. Uh, and as we know, as uh, artistic people, <laughs> we um, understand the value of healing through creativity. And so digital art journaling can help you get there. And what's great about digital art journaling um, is that there's no mess compared to, you know, doing mixed media, which I also love as much uh, to do as well. But there's something about just being able to step back and do this on the computer that's kind of uh, different and fun. And so we're gonna just jump in and I'm gonna share my process with you on how I would start something. So I usually art journal in an eight and a half by 11 size document because I like to be able to print these um, and then I keep them uh, in a folder or I will glue them into an art journal but whatever works for you if you're getting them printed or you're gonna put them in a book whatever you're gonna do with yours just start with the size that works for you okay and then what I would do is I would I would start my document and then what I would do, let me bring, bring this in here for you, is I would go through what I call my stash. And so right now we're going to be using um, these six products uh, that you can find in my Design Cuts store. Uh, and what I would do uh, is I would go through my stash and normally I would have, you know, more folders than this, but we're just going to keep it to this today. And what I start doing is I start going through the folders and I try really hard to not overthink what I'm doing and I'll start pulling random items out. Okay. Um, so for this particular demo, I'm going to actually start a new document to show you how I would do this. So I'm going to open it a 12 by 12 because that's what most scrapbooking supplies come in. So I would have this little extra document right here. A lot of times I'll just pull them in right on my regular, on my blank cabins canvas that I have here but since we're trying to get to a specific uh, place right now I'm gonna just go ahead and open this new document and start dragging it in here um, and so I would just randomly start picking to some things that look nice so I'm just gonna hit the control key and I'm gonna select a couple of these and I'm just gonna drag them right onto this document like this and you can see there's two of them here and then I would go to the next folder and look around in here and kind of see what's what is calling to me without overthinking it okay and so um maybe this bird and this and this i'm hitting the control key so that i can select multiple items and i'm going to pull like four or five things out of each folder and just kind of see where uh see where it gets me uh, and I would just drag them right into my document and then I have them all right here and there is a uh, method to this madness here in a second that is important that I will tell you about uh, okay and then I'm gonna go over here to the next one and then we can just pull some random things out uh, again I'm hitting the control key and I'm gonna grab a couple papers as well and I kind of know where we're going, so I'm picking a lot of the same things as I normally, um, that I chose last time, but I'm trying to pick a, new, a few new things as well. So I'm just kind of dragging these all right on my document, and we'll just move these papers down here so you can continue to see. And then let's just do a couple more. We don't have to go through all of this in the video. Maybe I'll just pull one of these out. And then I go back and I just kind of jump around 
let's just jump around and see what we can find. Okay, so we've got everything here. And what I would start doing is I would start building my page. And what this does is by allowing ourselves to just pick a few things that call to us, our subconscious is super good at coming up with images and symbols and words that we're not even maybe highly aware that we're thinking of. And so that's why I love the randomness of just going through the folders and picking a few things and working from that. And that's where I get started. And then of course, if I need to, or if I know there's a piece that I want, I can go back and I can find it, all right? So this is kind of what I would get started with, all right? Um, but since I know this is where we're going today, I've already, um, I've already made my uh, sheet, or I've already pulled everything here. This is what I originally started with. So I'm going to be using this one. And again, just to reiterate, the reason that I do that is because I feel like it's random and it really helps me to let go and allows me to create quickly. Um, and then I always find, I've never done this in all the years I've been doing this where I didn't find that exactly what I pulled out of my folders is exactly what I needed to be thinking about and working on something in my life. So that's how I do it. So let's just go ahead and get started building the page now. So I'm going to grab the paper first and I'm just going to drag it over to my eight and a half by 11 document. And I hit the shift key when I brought it over so that it would center it on my, um, on my document, all right? I just kind of want this white paper in the background to get me started. And you can move it around and see where you like it. Uh, if you're not working in 12 by 12, you have that option, okay? But I also really want to have an edge. I wanna feel like this page is closed in on itself, that it has a container, that it has a frame. Um, for me, that's what journaling is. Uh, in most of my digital art journal pages, you'll see this, uh, some sort of frame around the edge, um, because I want to contain my thoughts and feelings on this page. Um, and when it goes off of the edge, I feel like it's not contained. Again, that's a personal symbolism for myself, but uh, there is my thought process behind that. So we can start dragging. These are called assimilations and they just help convert any 12 by 12 paper to a eight and a half by 11. Okay, here's another one back here. And then do I have another one? I love layering these. All right, so I've kind of layered these all on and you can turn them on and off and see kind of what's going on. You can redrag the layers around. You can decide, oh, maybe I don't like the brown on this one. Yeah, this one I'm not loving on here today. So I'm gonna turn that off for now, or I can even just delete it. But I do like what we've got going on here, all right? And so a lot of times what I'll do um, in, my ex in my little document over here, if I'm using an extra one, is I will turn things off as I use them uh, so that I know what's been used. Again, a lot of times I'll just dump this all right in my canvas and turn layers on and off as I go. Uh, to start working, but I think that this is a little bit better um, way to go as a beginner. Okay, and then I loved this um, little wheel. It just seemed really appropriate for the time right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on my document. And what I would do is just kind of play with this and see where I want it. Again, I do have a very um, particular style that I tend to do these little clusters off to the right or to the left about three quarters of the way up or somewhere right in here. Uh, if you look at my journal pages, they almost all look like that. It's just my style. So I know that I'm gonna probably set this about right here. Plus of course, we've already, I've already made this page once. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a shadow, figure out what kind of shadow I want on this so I can copy the layer style and just use it on the rest of my document. Now, again, I, um, and very much about being able to create quickly and efficiently. Um, and so I tend to kind of, I don't want to say the easy way, but, but 
do the best I can without spending a ton of time fidgeting with stuff. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and just, I always put mine on a negative 45 degree angle. You can choose the shadow color that um, makes you happy. I like to use like a light gray. I hardly ever use black. Um, I use like a, a mid-tone gray. You can even use like a navy color or purple, um, like this really deep navy down here is sometimes really fun. Uh, so there's that, but I'm gonna go ahead and use like a, a gray color here, all right? And negative 45, and then you can play with the percentage here and see what you like. Now, as a mixed media artist, I really, really want these shadows to look realistic. Like I created this on my desk out of paper and ink. And then if I scanned it in, what would the shadows look like? And so it's not gonna have a shadow like this, even though digitally we can get away with something like that. Um, so I'm gonna just take this way in, just like it was a piece of paper. Um, I'm always thinking about what would this look like if I scanned it in real life? Um, and sometimes you're gonna get all the way up on 100% on the, uh, on your opacity. So it just kind of depends on what you want. And I'm going to set the tone for this page with this. Um, and so I think that's good about right there. All right, so I'm gonna hit okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna copy the layer style. And I'm gonna be using that layer style for a lot of the, any kind of mixed media elements that I'm gonna end up putting on this document, all right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pulling in some of the little um, graffitis and splatters and things that I pulled over. And I'm gonna start building my journal cluster is what I usually call it. I wanna get in here a little bit more for you guys. Um, okay, so we'll leave that there. Again, I'm gonna turn this off. Um, this, I'm kinda, I don't wanna say cheating, <laughs> uh, but I, I do know where we're going, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to just start pulling stuff over. But my thought process is always just that I'm building this cluster and I'm thinking about uh, my thoughts. And when I'm not talking to you, obviously I can go inside and have this be sort of a meditative um, 20 minutes of creativity. And I usually don't ever spend more than 20 minutes on a page, ever. Um, so that's kind of where where I go is I just let myself um, think and just create and I'm always shocked and amazed uh, by the symbolism that ends up coming up out of out on the page um, for me so the last one I did was letting go of fear uh, during this time that we're recording this uh, that seemed <laughs> that seems uh, really appropriate but I think I'm going to use this one this time um, just because today I'm feeling a little bit different mood than the first time I created this page. So now I'm going to hit right click on this layer and I'm going to hit paste layer style and we're going to get that layer style in there. And actually, we'll do it on here as well. And if I'm not loving it, I'm not loving it on these smaller things. So I'm going to actually go in here and see, I might want this just a little bit darker. Mm, something more like that, I think. So now I'm gonna copy this layer style and select all those layers. I just hit the control key to select multiple layers and I'm gonna paste the layer style. There we go, I like that better. I'm gonna hit the save button just in case. All right, then I'm gonna keep dragging a few things over, just kind of playing around, seeing what sticks. And this one, maybe I kind of want, oops, let's see. Maybe going that way. All right, so then I'm just gonna start playing with my items and making them smaller, bigger. Um, I'm just using the control keys. Whenever I'm art journaling, I always, 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 always have my auto select layer on and show transform controls. Now, I love that. I know some people aren't a huge fan of that, but for me, it makes this process so much easier just to be able to click on whatever layer I want um, without having to um, 
go over to my layers palette to pick pick the item. So that's how I that's how I do it. If you're wondering how I'm able to just um, pick each layer without using my layers palette, and then also being able to uh, move them around. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of show you where we were at here. So this is the page that I ended up with, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start building this and, and looking at this and kind of seeing where we're at so that I can show you some of the other um, techniques that I wanna show you. So I'm going to leave this star kind of big and bring it back here. In fact, I want to make these both a little bit smaller, I think. This is just going to be a little extra cluster up here. Kind of just bring your eye up here. I love this little blue, this little pop of blue on here. Then I'm going to hit the Alt key or the Apple key on a Mac, and I'm going to drag that layer. So I have the star layer selected. I'm going to hit the Alt key again and it's going to make a new one. And I'm going to make these smaller and we're going to just put them up on top of here and bring this one on top. And I'm going to make this one like that. And then I'm going to edit, transform, flip horizontal just so we can kind of get a little bit of variation in our stars up here. Yeah, maybe like that. This is a cute little extras little cluster up here. And then I'm going to go grab this uh, stitching here, bring it over, and just going to kind of play with this a little bit. Maybe one of the stars is underneath it, something like that. And then I'm just going to put a teensy tiny little drop shadow on this. Okay. I'm going to hit save in the middle. If I could give you a huge tip for today, that would be it. Just make sure you get in the habit of saving your work every few seconds. All right. So this is kind of what I would call the mid range of an art journal page. So I've kind of got my cluster going on. I'm trying to decide if I kind of want that off the page a little bit. Let's make this a little bit smaller. How's that? Yeah? Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start putting some of these fun things on here. So I, I have this paint. All right. And I want this paint on here. But I don't want it black, obviously. And and you can use your brushes too. Um, obviously these come with brushes as well, but I usually end up using the pink files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my effects panel. I've got my layer selected. I'm gonna go to effects. I'm gonna go to color overlay. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab this color right here that's in the heart so that it matches. Perfect. Or I can maybe grab this a little bit lighter. You can just kind of click around. Or if we wanted this yellow, pink, whatever color you want, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and grab this turquoise color and I'm gonna hit okay. And then what I wanna do is I wanna flatten this layer style so that I can uh, start blending this into my page. So, I'm going to create a new layer on the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter, okay, of, of my paint layer here. So I'm on my paint layer. Then I'm going to hit the control key and I'm gonna select both of these layers, all right, and I'm gonna hit control E, which merges them. Or you could um, right click and choose merge layers, all right? And then that takes off the effect so that now this is just turquoise. All right, because what we want to do now is we're going to play with the blending options. So now I'm going to go to the effects again and I'm going to choose blending options. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this look like paint or ink that's been soaked into the paper. We want it to kind of look like it wasn't done in Photoshop and it's just sitting there. All right. So we have these like little slider buttons right here. And so I want you to just start playing with them. And now it's gone and now it comes back. Um, and so I want you to start playing with these and I'm going to pull it until it's about halfway disappeared. All right. So see how it's kind of disappeared. Then I'm going to take the alt key. All 
All right, I'm gonna press the Alt key and I'm gonna hover over this little tiny triangle and I'm gonna pull it apart, okay? And now what we can do is we can really fine tune how we want this to look like ink, okay? So see how I can take it all the way down and it can look like maybe that's an alcohol ink or some sort of staining watercolor. Um, but I can also bring it back up and we can get more and more and more into acrylic paint. But what I want you to notice is that we're starting to see some of the layers coming through. And when you're digital art journaling, it's all about the layers. You're pushing the layers to um, forwards and backwards and overlapping so that it looks like you're really using paints and inks. And that actually looks pretty good right there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave that maybe right there, all right? So now we have this ink splatter that will interact with the background. And you'll see, watch, watch this bottom one, um, as different colors go underneath it, it will change what is showing through, okay? So that's awesome. So I might even put it behind that map piece for now, maybe like that, maybe right there, okay? And then I'm going to turn that off so I know I've used it. And I'm gonna start pulling in, I wanna pull in some of these, um, these little grunge, overlays back here. I want to get some texture on my page. And I might, and I think I did, did I just leave them black? Yeah, I just left them black on here because what I want this to do is I want it to look like I was using stamps or transfers. Uh, and so it's kind of where we're at. No, let's move this one instead. Again, I'm just using the control key to uh, move things around. So when you have the transform layers on, once you've selected a layer, you can hit the control key to make sure that you don't select any other layer while you're moving things around. Helpful, helpful hint there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to leave those here. All right, then what I can do is I can take another one of these. This one is pink. Uh, and what I want to do now is I'm going to do the same type of thing, except this time I'm going to make it, I, I don't want this, oops, I don't want this pink. So I'm going to go to color overlay. I'm going to change this to yellow. All right. Again, we're, we're, we're taking a few little shortcuts here because I've already made this page. So I knew what color I wanted it, but you can just go in there and you can play um, and experiment. And again, I want to be able to play with the blending options and I can't do that while there's an effect on it. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to control click. So both of those layers are selected. I'm going to hit control E and now the effect is gone. So now I can play with the blending options. All right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I uh, stenciled this on here backwards uh, just for the fun of it. And I'm going to kind of play with it. And I'm just going to, I just want a little bit of texture down here. Maybe straighten that out just a teensy bit. Just kind of let it be down here. And I'm going to go to the blending options and again, play with this. And because this is yellow, it's gonna be a lot different than it was before. Um, so I'm just gonna play around in there and let some of it kind of just inkly disappear here. See how some of that disappeared? And if I move it around, you'll see that different parts of it disappear depending on what it's interacting with at the bottom, uh, at the bottom layer underneath it, I should say. All right, so I think this is looking pretty good compared to what we've got over, over here on this one. But one of the things I wanna to talk to you about real quick is journaling. So a lot of times we're nervous about our journaling. And I'm gonna go over here, I already did some journaling and put it in a text document so you guys didn't have to uh, have me sit here and type. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to select the the text tool and I'm going to go ahead and draw myself a text box and I'm going to draw it. You can draw it for the whole document or however big you want it. Like if you only want your text right here, just draw your text box however big you want it. Um, and then I'm going to hit control V to type in my journaling. Okay. Um, let's bring this up on the top layer here. All right. So I've got my journaling here and I've made it into, um, I've got a typewriter font Sears Tower right now, um, which is fine. 
that's I actually that's what I used over there. So that's actually perfect. Um, and I'm going to bring it back all the way behind this map graffiti because I know what the journaling said. I experienced it. I was there. Um, there can be a few words poking out. Um, and, and so that you can remember that journaling. Remember part of this digital art journaling process is not so much about the finished piece, although we're always excited when those turn out, but a lot of times it's, it really isn't about that. It's about the journey and it's about enjoying the creative process and healing through that. So it's not like you necessarily need those words always to be out there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do on that is just, you can play around a little bit with your um, character box. Uh, your character tools, your paragraph tools. I have this being uh, right justified right now. Um, I could center it, I could put it to the left, but um, for this particular page, I like it being right justified. And then you can change the, um, the width between the lines, you can change the spacing between letters, whatever you wanna do. I don't wanna spend too much time on that right now. Um, but play with your characters uh, box. They can, it can do so much. Your character menu, I keep calling it a box, but your character library menu. Um, and just kind of play with that. And then again, I'm going to play with the effects. I think I'm gonna make this just a little bit darker black perhaps. Yeah, maybe right there. Like it was really typed. If it was really typed, we'd probably have to make the lettering smaller. But let's go play with our blending options and just see what we can get. Like maybe some of the ink got um, painted over. We can make it disappear a little bit. Maybe just even just just a little bit. It just, just doesn't need very much for this one. Again, to remind you, you're going to pull the Alt key to play with that. And then usually this is the one I play with, but you can play with all of these um, and see what happens. You know, you could play with this one, but usually I'm playing down here, just, just a little bit. Um, and it looks like on this one, I even put the journaling behind the blue, um, the blue ink, okay? So just whatever you wanna play, play with. Just keep playing with those, uh, those blending sliders. Okay, we're gonna call that good. I'm gonna hit control save. So that is my process through journaling. I wanna show you one more quick tip before we go. If you are the type of person that wants to use all these mixed media, funky kind of fun layered uh, pieces, but you prefer to journal by hand, I want to show you a quick little thing that you can do for yourself. So what I'm going to do now is let's just make a copy of this. I'm going to um, image duplicate, okay? And now I have a copy of this. Make sure you're working on a copy. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete my journaling, all right? And I might even, we'll just kind of see where this goes here. We could even make this a little smaller. I'll kind of show you where we're going here. Maybe this can even live up here now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make ourselves some journaling papers. Maybe this lives right there. Okay, and maybe this kind of comes off the edge. Okay, I'm trying to get this layer here, okay. Meeting turn. What I'm doing is I'm going to create myself a little paper, a little journaling paper that I can print, that I can use my supplies, and that I can print with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just draw a box that goes on the entire document. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the period key um, to just kind of make some lines of periods. You could use dashes. I'm going to do control A to select what I've typed, control C, control V. So now I'm just gonna fill up this whole box and don't worry about the font that we have right now. Um, we can just go choose something like Arial uh, or uh, just something really plain where we're just gonna get a nice dot. Uh, my computer is gonna freeze up here on me here at the end. We tried to do one too many little fun things here. Let's see if we can get it to that one will work. Let's just go with it since, oh, it didn't go. <laughs> we want something that's just really 
that'll work. Okay. And we're going to have to put a few more dots in there. All right. So I'm going to drag this back. You can use dashes if you want. Sometimes I think it's fun to draw lines. And then we can play uh, here and we can decide how many, the width between the lines. So if we want fat journaling lines, we can do that. Uh, just kind of play with it. That seems good right there. And then I can kind of make these a little bit lighter, I think. And we could even make them a color to do our journaling lines, maybe pink or this coral color might be kind of fun. The gray was actually cute too. Um, and you can make them depending on um, what you're going for and what kind of lines you like to write on. You just need to play with this menu. Let's make them, let's just try this pink color, just like that. And we'll kind of put this over to the side. I definitely, as much as I do want all of these lines, I definitely still want some of this um, design, you know, some of the fun to come out. We could even just maybe make this up at the top. So it's kind of like a little header. Maybe this just lives over here. It can even be through our journaling lines, yeah? All right, so there we have, now we can just hit print. All right, and we have this perfect page to be able to journal on. And especially right now is a great time to make sure that you're journaling and writing. Uh, and you can create as many of these as you want. And it's fun to do it after you've made a journal page because you've kind of already got a theme and everything going on here. And it's just easy to quickly make yourself a journal page as well that you can print and journal on. Thank you everyone so much for joining me for this page. I love digital art journaling. I'm so glad that I was able to share this with you today. Um, you can find all the products that I use today in my Design Cuts store. And I uh, appreciate you all for being here. Thank you so much. It was my absolute pleasure. And I hope that you have a good time making. Uh, digital art journaling pages uh, for your journals and also printable journal sheets that you can journal on by hand. We'll see you next time.